Hey you, it's me, Curtis P, and it's time for some coffee. Starting off with the iPhone 8 related news, everyone, more rumors are pointing to a $1,000 iPhone. A new tweet from Venya Geskin shows that the new iPhone 8 could come in at a number of different price points and capacities. 64 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, and 512 gigabytes in size. Each phone has a correlating price point here at $999 for the starting point, then $1,099 for the 256, and $1,199 for the 512. Currently, a lot of places are pointing to the same same price points for the same capacities, but the 512 gigabyte one seems to be kind of hit or miss. For myself personally, I think it's kind of crazy to get 512 gigs of storage on your phone. Like, I don't know what you're doing with all that storage. My current iPhone is a 64 gig and I have used, I checked it yesterday because I wanted to know when I was researching all this, I've used like 20% of it. Like, I don't know what people are putting on their phone. What are you keeping on your phone? Now, of course, you can always reference the fact that the phone shoots 4K video, so you need more space for that. but do you really need as much space or more than like the bottom and MacBook? That seems a little crazy here. Like what are you doing with all that space on your phone? You should probably offload those videos to somewhere else. But again, circling back here, it does point out that the next iPhone will probably start at $1,000. That being the iPhone Pro slash edition model. Because if you remember on Monday, I talked about how the next generation iPhones will be the iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and the iPhone X or edition. There's not gonna be an iPhone 7s this year. They're just skipping that one because let's face it, the iPhone 7 was not like the greatest phone Apple ever created. So let's skip past that. Let's move on to the 8 and everyone will be happy. There are also more rumors pointing to the color selection for the iPhone 8. New photos of the SIM cards have leaked online showing off the three brand new colors, that being black, silver, and the new blush gold. Now, as we get closer and closer to launch, personally, the blush gold one is not looking as bad as it originally did, but in the end, I'm probably just gonna stick with the black one because that's what I always do. I just like it. I think it looks cleaner, simpler, but I think a lot of people are gonna like the new blush gold model. And to end off all the iPhone 8 related news here, everyone, of course, the big announcement for the next iPhone, Apple's big keynote event that will be happening at Apple Park at the Steve Jobs Auditorium. That's happening next week. So of course, we're sort of ramping up towards that. New drone video from Apple Park actually shows off the theater it looks pretty much done at this point. The team over there have been quickly sort of reassembling it, getting it all together. There's also been some photos that have leaked of the inside of the theater. Of course, this is in a major under construction mode, but with Apple guaranteeing they'll be having their event at the Steve Jobs Auditorium next week, I'm sure it will be done on time. It'll just be interesting to see what the press actually thinks of the brand new venue. Next up into some quick related news, everyone, a cool video released online shows off the power of Apple's AR kit here. If you ever wanted to see what a Tesla would look like in your driveway, bam, you can just use AR kit. Drop one right on your driveway. You can pick the color you want. You can even drive it around a little bit if you want to. AR Kit's a brand new feature included inside of iOS 11 coming out this fall. Next up, looks like Apple is ditching the Apple Music Festival. Started in 2011 here, Apple will be calling it quits on the famous London-based music festival. Apple said that due to their shifting priorities, they will no longer be offering the concert series. Now, recently, Apple Music has gone on to provide individual concerts on the service, not just one big concert. This helps to keep customers interested and subscribe for a long period of time, which is something you want to develop with a new streaming service. Next up, YouTube got a little bit of an update here recently as they're rolling out some brand new features. YouTube will now allow users to stream directly from their phone devices. Now, previously, this was only available on Android, but now it's available on the iPhone as well. There's now lower live streaming latency, so it's closer to real time, and there's brand new chat tools for easier moderation. Next up, let's talk about the Essential Phone because iFixit got their hands on the brand new device and uh, it's interesting to see how it sort of pulls apart or at least you know it doesn't. iFixit doing their standard tear down of the brand new phone found out uh, bad news everybody the phone it's not that easy to repair. Many of the components inside of the phone were actually layered in strange ways making it very difficult to get them apart and there's lots of adhesive used to actually keep the phone together making it even worse to tear apart. iFixit themselves couldn't even get the screen off the device without it cracking. iFixit giving it a label of one out of 10 for repairability, which is the worst it could possibly be. So if you buy yourself an essential phone, uh, good luck fixing it yourself or getting someone to fix it. 
you're probably gonna have to send it back to the company and they probably are just gonna give you like a new model or an exchange model or something like that. Next up, Google Street View got a big update here as the company finally upgraded all of the camera modules on their cars. This is the first time in eight years that Google is upgrading the cameras on the Street View vehicles. From the old 15 cameras, they're going down to seven, but each of those seven cameras will have a 20 megapixel sensor on it. This means the photos will be clear, high resolution, and have more vivid color. There's also going to be an interesting laser radar system built into the brand new cars for helping to map the world and then putting that into Google Maps. And this part Probably one of the most interesting parts that I read in the article about this was the brand new machine learning that Google's applying to all of these photos. Google's machine learning will be able to detect street signs and actually like read them and then log them into Google Maps. So if the street information is incorrect, they'll just grab it off the signs and then put it into their database. Google is also applying this to buildings in the world. So they'll be able to read like signs on buildings and they're even going to be able to read like the tiny little sign that says, it's open from nine till five in the afternoon. Like they're gonna be able to read that thanks to these brand new camera sensors. The company even pointing out that Google Maps may soon be able to answer complex questions like, What's the name of that pink store next to the church on the corner here? I forget what the name of that is. Google would know because it knows where the church is, it knows what building is pink, and then it has read the sign so it can just tell you what that is. Bam, super smart and super cool at the same time. And face it, it saves a lot of time like manually entering all this information into Google Maps when the computer can just read it like we read it with our eyes. And last but not least everyone, the Lilium Flying Taxi has got a bunch of new funding and hopefully that will lead to an actual flying vehicle in the near future. The German flying car startup Lilium has secured $90 million in additional funding. Now they're working on building a five-seat all-electric flying taxi, as you can see here. Now they're calling it the Lilium Jet, and it'll have the ability to stay in the air for about an hour and fly up to 180 miles per hour or 290 kilometers per hour. So it can fly pretty far in that hour time frame, which is awesome, and it also has the ability to take off and land vertically, which is amazing because then you don't need an airport. Lilium hopes to have a fully functioning jet take off in 2019 and their on-demand taxi service ready for 2025. Overall, you know, I've talked about this sort of stuff before, but it's so cool to see that flying car technology, at least like, flying car in that sort of way is sort of becoming a thing now. We've seen these large scale drones that can carry a single person. Now this sort of a jet sort of system that can carry five people. Now it's not really a car. It won't be traveling around on the ground, but it's more like a pod that you get into. It takes off by itself, flies by itself. Nothing wrong with that. We're not all going to become pilots here. And let's face it, you're gonna probably need a pilot's license to fly this thing. Unless it's flown by a robot, then maybe we can get around that. So overall, super cool. Maybe in the future we'll see the jumping from like large cities back and forth but I wouldn't be expecting to land this in your driveway anytime soon but with that we arrive at the end of the video so hopefully you enjoyed it today if you did make sure you hit up that like button and of course subscribe to the channel I'm working on releasing new videos just like this every Monday Wednesday and Friday everyone you can find other videos like this on screen right now or of course you can follow me on Facebook Twitter Instagram all that fun stuff link on screen right now or you can go to my website at curtisparity.ca well until next time everyone I'm Curtis Parody. Have an amazing day.